All right, there's our next episode of True Wrestling Fan Discussing, continuing our pay-per-view retro review series. This will be uh, in your house. If you want to keep calling in your house, technically it is in your house, but this is uh, Unforgiven, WWF Unforgiven, 1998. I'm your host, Mike. I'm Frank. Let's get into it. Yeah, I, get, I think now they're doing Unforgiven in your house. In your house, yeah. So, whatever. It's Unforgiven. I stopped calling it in your house. I've got them all marked in my holy grail as, as the name of the pay-per-view, not in well, your be- house anymore. Yeah, because going forward, they keep using these names anyway yeah most of them for the for the most part yeah yeah, yeah so. and so this one is the, the 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 this is the heart of the attitude era now this is getting the, the uh, this pay-per-view well, is now the momentum has switched well it's uh, post wrestlemania it's uh post wrestlemania mm-hmm. so uh, sean first, is gone first austin, austin defense yeah sean's unfortunately gone even yeah, though they're I still guess, yeah. they're still saying you know he's injured get well soon sean yeah, yeah. they uh the scratch logo I believe is this is, this might be the first scratch logo pay per view. I think could be wrong. Oh yeah, yeah, I like that logo. It was kind of cool. Yeah, like I, I I missed the block one to be honest though. I missed the block logo. Honestly, I missed the whole WWF because when Howard Finkel it's used still to come WWF out, to me, I don't care, dude. When it's he would when w- he would say World Wrestling, Wrestling Federation, Federation Championship, yeah. it had it had you, you had he had yeah, you, yeah. yes. Had now you, it's yeah. WWE. I'm something. like. Royal, Royal Wrestling Entertainment. Anyway. Yeah, we're still WWF. We're old school. Yeah. All right, let's get into it. April 26, 1998, Greensboro, North Carolina. We're in flare country here. Watch out. Woo! Buy rate on this one was pretty good. This is where the momentum was taking up, uh, was starting to get into their favor. 300,000 buys on this one. Because yeah, Austin's the it. champion. For not for a uh, a non major event because the in your yeah. houses weren't they weren't uh major events it's pretty good. Yep, because now we've started the Austin McMahon feud. It's well under underway. The eighty four week streak is broken. Unfortunately, they would lose. I think another twelve or so. They wouldn't get the uh, win again till uh, late summer. Yeah. But they were they, they were right on path. the fast track. Yes, right path. There we go. J- JR and Lawler are obviously on commentary. Always good to hear these two. Our opening match w- was an interesting one. It was a six man tag team match. It was Farouk, no longer the member of the nation. He was outed the night after WrestleMania, teaming with Ken Shamrock and Steve Blackman versus the Intercontinental Champion, The Rock, the new leader of the nation, mm-hmm. D'Lo Brown and Mark Henry with the Godfather at ringside. Well, he was still comma, but he was starting the uh, the entire. Yeah, they mentioned but, on one of the Jim Ross mentions on I think it's the next pay per view, the next in your house. He says, you know, the boys in the back they call him uh, the Godfather. The Godfather, yeah, love that gimmick, man. It was awesome, and this match w- was pretty good. I, um, I was really hoping it would start off Farouk and Rock because this is the match we wanted to see. Um, Farouk is still wearing the nation uh, get up, doesn't really have an entrance team. It's, it's funny when he's in the ring and D'Lo is in there, he gets tagged in. D'Lo's like, bro, we're, we're the same. You know, I'm sorry. You know, it was him. And, you know, and then he starts beating on him. But Farouk pulls out the strap, starts whipping the boy. Referee's letting it go. Crowd's going nuts. It was weird to see Farouk as a fan favorite, but it was. It was. But, you know, th- this is for a short time because then when they don't know what to do with him, they'll just throw, they'll throw him in the ministry. They'll get kidnapped, and then he's an they accolade. Been, when they turned him babyface, they should just call him Ron Simmons, man. Yes, they should have. So I was always hoping stuff. I was always hoping that eventually Ron Simmons would yeah. be used, and it, unfortunately it wouldn't be used until the end of his – near the end of his career right, in 2003. Right. Yeah, and it was at that point. By that point, who cares? Yeah. But this, you know, Ron Simmons should have been reborn in WWE at this point, yeah. but – Unfortunately, we still got Farouk. Um, at one point, like every uh, like every six man tag team match, especially against the Nation, all six men get into the ring at once. Uh, Farouk hits the Dominator on the Rock and gets the pin, which is good because going forward at the next pay per view, the, then Farouk will receive an Intercontinental Title match against mm-hmm. the Rock. Uh, after the match, uh, Michael Cole interviewed Farouk on the whole thing, and he said, "I'm not finished, not you know, not by a long shot." Pretty much using Austin's words there. But um, so now, yeah, through Jim Shamrock's not done with Rock either. He still has a, a huge vendetta to, with him. So following uh, that, uh, Steve Austin came to the ring and uh, brought the timekeeper into the ring because yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, everybody was afraid of uh, Montreal Part Two. Yeah, this was and, good, man. Yes, it was. He, no, he brings Austin Mark Eaton in the ring, and he says, "You know, you're gonna, you know, do your job." And 
you know, Mark Eaton's like, well, if I don't do what Vince says, I, I'll get fired. He goes, if I, you don't do what I say, you're going to get an ass whooping. Yep. You know, he said, which one's worse? <laughs> he goes, you get your ass whooped, but you still have your job. Mm -hmm. So th this was funny, especially in the main event where Vince is looking at Mark Eaton. Eaton's like, no, I don't, I don't mm -hmm. see you. So, because, yeah, they're, they're building this up as the second screw job, which was kind of mm -hmm. cool. So, and then uh, following that, they uh, now they showed what happened at WrestleMania with Triple H and Owen Hart, with uh, with China, with the low blow and all this. This is where they started burying him, unfortunately. Yeah, they continue. Because this is the oh, last pay-per-view that Owen's actually a fan favorite. Yeah, because then he goes to the DX. I mean, I'm sorry, the Nation. He goes to the Nation, which made no sense. So No, it didn't. And it, they started making him look like a road sign. Yeah. I mean, this was really, really bad. You might as well just put the gobbledygooker costume on him and just, I mean, th this this is unfortunate because Owen right now, with, with Brett not there, Owen could shine as a main eventer. And they're not, he's, they're not and I, I didn't like it. So, of course, for the next match, we got for the European Championship, Triple H defending the title against Owen Hart once again. This time with a stipulation that China is to be locked into in a cage elevated above the ring. Yeah, we've seen this before. And we'll see this again in the future. And it never works. Especially when she, you know, she had a nail file, she dropped it. Then all of a sudden, she, you know, she, she's she's trying to bend, bend the bars. That was actually funny. That was it actually was. pretty funny, though. Yeah. It was to show her strength. Yeah. Then she's dangling from the deck. Yeah, that looked all, pretty dangerous, man. Not it was. I thought at first she lost. I know she's strong. Grip. Yeah, I know she's strong, but still, man. A fall from there would have hurt. It would have busted yeah. up some. And then Owen is under it, really thinking that she's going to fall. Like, he's like, I'm going to catch you. Yeah, okay, you're going to catch me. But um, she actually, um, she she wound up getting out of the cage thanks to Road Dog, who, who yeah, came Road out Dog and lowered, lowered the cage. Yeah. So now she's free to do whatever I want. Now, Owen had the sharpshooter on Triple H as the cage was being lowered. Naturally, he lets it go because, oh, China's out of the ring. Let me take this hold off of him and go deal with you. I mean, no so sense. now what's going to happen? Well, The referee's distracted well. with China. Owen now hits a pedigree yeah. on Triple H, and an X-Pac comes out hits him with a fire extinguisher. Yeah. Oh, my God. This is, this is after X-Pac had... Uh... You know, he just joined the... Uh, yeah, they actually joined, mentioned during this, um, either DX. this one or the next one, that, yeah, because the next one he didn't fight, that his uh, he would be in the ring soon. He wasn't allowed to uh, compete right. just yet. Yeah, he I had think the he had like still. The, no complete clause. He had gotten fired uh, fired from uh, WCW via FedEx. FedEx there, style. Well. And then remember, we all know the famous promo where Triple H says, you look to your blood, you look to the click. And then <laughs> I Tell remember that think, promo. kid. <laughs> I, I remember when this happened, when he said that, you look to your blood, you look to the click. And I knew Hall and Nash weren't going to come back. And I didn't know X-Pac was fired yet. Or Six-Pac, I should say. Yeah. And then and then X-Pac comes out. And then I was like, who cares? And then Lord Ross is like, well, look who's back. Yeah, I'm like, I'm like I like, don't get me wrong, I like Six-Pac and WCW, don't get me wrong. But he was a mid-carder. So when he joined the, the he jo it, it worked, don't get me wrong, it worked in DX. Yes, with the New Age Outlaws, it did. But I'm saying for that moment, I was just like, then he went off on Bishop. To, to me, problem. I thought of it as the start of the the turn. Now, now all these guys went to WCW, and, and now they here they're coming back now. You and got so Bishop. What did he say? Bishop, you, you got, got your, your head. head. You so far uh, up Hogan's ass. Exactly. You know what he yeah. had for breakfast. All right, that was actually good. That was actually good. And the fact that he did that promo and mentioned everybody, right. I'm like, oh, it's on. That that's it's probably his only memorable. Uh, promo to be honest with you like well that that in the dx invasion uh to wcw when 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 uh luger and them are behind the thing going should we open the uh, gate and i remember vince in the, one of the documentaries uh uh on the when they the monday night war documentary series he goes well if they would have showed up at my at my arena i'd have let them in because i'm getting the ratings on that so imagine uh how many people would have tuned in if they opened yeah. the gate and let dx come in yeah i, I mean damn know. It would have been cool. Even yeah, a, cro been a crossover uh, pay-per-view would have been awesome. Break the fourth wall down, down back then, whatever. But By the way, um, uh, Owen again gets the X. Oh, yeah. The oh, by the way, yeah, Owen loses. Yeah. We got all sidetracked with X-Pac. Shocking. Shocking. Well, I will I will say this. Owen gets his revenge in the next pay-per-view. He does get the victory. Uh, you know, 
I'll, I'm yeah. not. I'm not going to spoil the, what the match is. I yet, have something you. to say, and I have something to say about that. But we'll get what, into on that the next, next in your house. Yeah, we'll get into that next next step. Okay. But the the funny thing about the aftermath of this match is his slogan when when Michael Cole went to interview him, he said, "Enough is enough." Enough. It's time. It, time. It's, it's, it's time for me to change. It wasn't the whole thing like in, in his uh, intro music, but it was like that was it. And I'm like, damn, you were you were a fan favorite for like a second. I liked it. And then if you're going to go back to a heel, if you're going to be a heel again, then at least elevate him to be a No, we're going to put him in the nation. They buried him. Anyway. And then we're going to then we're going to do some UFC stuff with you during the summer. At least he had a match. A lot of people don't don't maybe not remember this. He <laughs> fought Edge, at, you know, in one of the pay-per-views, so I mean, that was an actual good that was a good match. But I, I feel sorry for, for Owen at this point because it's literally, I feel like he's getting punished for something he really didn't even do. Anyway, moving on. Uh, the next match on the card was for the NWA Tag Team Titles. Oh, Lord Jesus. The Midnight Express, Bombastic... Uh, no, no, no. The new. Oh, I'm the sorry. New. The new Midnight Express. <laughs> and, the, the and, curse. And, what, and, what, and what's the curse of the new in the 2000? Yeah, it's garbage. Except for the New Age Outlaws. Yeah, They're the exception part. to the rule. But technically... This new age means modern day. But they're not a rehash of an old team. They're, no, so, they're not. Thank God. Right, right, right. So the funny thing about this match is that I heard... You hear the Rockers music, right? Yeah, what the hell? And I had it... That thing is, I hadn't... I had I don't I hadn't seen this in years, so I forgot. No, who they no, were, it was who, dubbed over. Oh, they dubbed were. Even, was it dubbed over? Yes, because yeah, I don't ever remember. And I, I'll find I, I'll find my VCR in the garage somewhere, and I'll put that tape on. Well, I mean, either I way, I'm watching I, this. I, I really but, don't think that that was the original right, theme. No, but listen, but listen to this. So I'm watching this, and I hear the Rockers theme. And again, I haven't seen this in years, so I don't even I, I don't remember. Like, think? Michael's and Janetti. I thought it was the new Rockers, and I was like. No, oh, Cassidy like, and Ryan Janine. The new, the new Rockers versus the new Midnight Express. That was like, this is, this, oh that, my god. Why don't we, why don't we do a triple threat match and get the new Blackjacks in there, or a Fatal Four Way and get like the old and, and LOD two thousand was on this card. So you oh, got Lord. the yeah, two thousand there too, <laughs> and you got the new Curse on the same card. But no, no, it was the uh, Rock and Roll Express. And weren't they part of Gornet's stable like a month ago, two months ago? Uh, I think so. Yeah. Think so. They came out and beat beat down Bradshaw. You know, it, it's the it's the Rock and Roll Express, Jarrett, and nobody, uh, here's the thing. Any, and Wyndham. Here's the thing. Nobody cares about this NWA stuff. No, they don't. I didn't. They don't. And it was bodacious. I like the fact that the Rock and Roll Express wrestled in WWE. Yeah, but they were they're way past their prime. And I guess maybe because it was in you know it was in the, the North South. Carolina, right? Yeah, um, they're they're still big there. Um, no, they're bodacious. still wrestling to this day. Yeah, no. Well, unfortunately. Bodacious Bart <laughs> and Bombastic Billy. You already cursed these guys. And this is um, Bombastic Bart, Bodacious Bob. Bodacious Bob, yeah. Yeah, Bodacious Bob. You already cursed these guys with these I mean, stupid names. This guy just got knocked out. He just yeah. got knocked the hell out by Bart. I will Bart. say this. They did look good. Physically. Physique wise. Physique wise. Well, when, I, 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 but like when the, the bell I rang. Like the attire. Yeah, but when the bell rang. When the bell rang, it was all garbage. No, it was garbage. Well, they had to do something with. Uh, Bart Gunn, well, because Billy is now soaring well, in they his new them. gimmick. After they ruined him. Yeah, and uh, I thought Holly this was a stinker, is looking man. for something after racing cars. Yeah. I thought this was a stinker. Hardcore. It was. The only interesting thing was that Cornette gets into the ring, and you know he wants to fight Tim White, and Tim White's like, "Screw it, I'll fight you." Well, you don't, you don't, you don't get in the, you don't, you don't challenge Tim White, man. That's a tough son of yeah. a bitch. You know, God, you know, rest in peace. <clears throat> you know, you don't mess with Tim White. And this was a, a typical Cornette match. Even if you go back to any of the other Midnight Expresses, this, I just, I just wanted this NWA stuff to go away. I just after to go, this, it did. Thank God. It, it was, it was done because Jerry uh, went back to his old gimmick eventually with Tennessee Lee. You know the old music, the old outfit. What I was mean, on this? Oh, the it's not getting to Jeff Jarrett, man. I don't know. We'll we have to get into Jeff. We'll get into Jeff. We'll Jarrett get into him later. later. We'll get him into him later. Don't mention. We got that, a lot man. of Jeff Jarrett on this. It's like Voldemort. It's like Jeff Jarrett's like Voldemort. I don't want to mention. Oh mention boy. That. <laughs> anyway, Robert Gibson. You know, he went for the pin on Bart. As you know, Cornette came in while the ref was distracted. Accidentally elbows Bart. Typical thing. 
Gibson rolled him up for the pin, but Holly gave him a running bulldog and pins him. The new Midnight Express keep the tag team titles. So Midnight Express keep the NWA titles. Uh, this, I, uh, I believe, was pretty much you know, coming to an end with the NWA stuff. Thank God. Yeah, seriously. Because then the Rock and Roll Express didn't stick around unless you did something like this. So following this uh, match, Doc Hendricks now uh, interviewed Goldust and Luna because they have an evening gown match coming up. Yeah. Oh, boy. Like, WrestleMania wasn't enough. And um, during the match, Sable came out on her own because Mark Merrill refused to walk Sable down the, uh, the aisle for this whole thing to escort her. Meanwhile, he comes back later, distracts her, and Luna gets the victory. Luna gets the victory, yeah. This is the, and, uh... and then Sable chases her under the ring and completely strips her. Thank God Goldust has got his robe down there. You know, because we don't need to see this uh, by any means. Please, let's not see this. And oh, so, man. this was this was a stinker. This made no sense. This was just another thing in the whole Sable, Mero, Luna thing that is just, at this point, becoming pointless. However, people were wanting to see Sable. She, she was pretty yeah. much the only reason why they were cheering. And they wanted to see <sighs> Sable, Sable in a bra, so. Can you blame you them? Back then, can you see I thought they were. Them? Nah, not for the Iverson, man. I don't want to nitpick, man, but I thought they were too big, though, man. The implants were a little too big. It was like a little bit like just too much. Like disproportioned almost. You know what I'm saying? That's just me personally. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't complain, you know, but I'm just saying. Back then, no. Yeah, so. Just like we wouldn't complain if Sonny came and sat down next to us and now. No, but with me. you know what? I'm not going to go off on a tangent. I always found Sonny more attractive than Sable because Sonny, to me, looked like a naturally pretty girl. Yes. Whereas Sable, Sable looked like an exaggeration with the... uh with the huge implants, you know what I mean? Like, it and just... then it was worse when she came back in two thousand three. Oh yeah, because yeah, she was a little older, and and it just yeah. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't want to, I don't, I don't want to speak ill of her if I'm, then Brock Lesnar shows up on you that fives me through my yeah. kitchen table. Yeah. You know, I, I don't want to talk bad uh, about. Two inches on though. Two inches on. Exactly. Moving on. <laughs> Following uh, this match, Big Two Man now comes out. Uh, this was all, all awesome stuff. He comes out with Patterson and Briscoe, his little stooges. Uh, Vince says something, you know, catastrophic is going to happen tonight. Um, also, he um, he will screw Austin out of the WWE title. And I'm like, oh, great. I hope you watch it, Brett. Yeah, he's got the new belt. Austin's got the new belt, too. The, uh, yeah. The Eagle. I, at this point back then, I was still trying. I was still getting used yeah. to it because I was a fan of the I, other I, one. Yeah, the winged eagle is my favorite, but I still like the the especially with the blue strap. I thought I actually yeah. prefer the blue the blue strap over the black strap. Mm -hmm. It just it gave it a different look. Um, so that was cool. But well, everything yeah. leading up to the uh, this oh, it's tremendous with, with the, the suit. suit Austin had, oh my god, I remember takes that it off and has the new shirt on. Yeah, you know, yeah. let me let me you know let me show off my new Austin shirt. Yeah, he said that you're gonna have to do things the easy way or the hard way, and you know. They took a picture and he goes, now you take that picture because this is yeah. the last yeah. time. Oh, man. I used awesome. to love when, when Austin used to just uh, punch Vince right in the balls. That used to kill me every time. I used to die laughing whenever he used to do that. Because this, everybody has this dream, and I hope y'all didn't want to do this to me being your boss and stuff. But <laughs> No, the general, <laughs> the general manager, Steven. Yeah, there you go. We all want to do that to him. Yeah. I would have given y'all a hundred bucks in my wedding if somebody. Well, did. he fired. Well, he actually fired me. So, like, I did when he did fire me. I thought about stunning him. I did think about stunning him, but then I was like, "This guy's gonna press charges." So let me just walk away. I couldn't get to the guy that terminated me because he had somebody <laughs> like blocking his path. Yeah. Like he sat down in the office, and I wasn't allowed to move past the doorway when he did it. Oh yeah. uh, well, no. That's all right, dude. Karma comes back to people. Oh yeah. Well, he got fired, by the way. Yes, he, he ended did. up getting fired. So you know, so did so did the one that got rid of me. Yeah, so there, there you go. go, there you go. So anyway, and, but, but yeah, like love, you people love our blockbuster stories, by the way. Yeah, but <laughs> but like you were saying, like everybody wanted to kind of stun their boss. So like they all know, wanted to beat the crap out of their boss, and this right. is we're we're living vicariously, vicariously. Through, through Austin right now. Yeah. So our next match on the card is. Uh, for the for the tag team titles, it's New Age Outlaws defend, defending against the Battle Royal winners from WrestleMania, the new number one contenders, LOD 2000. With, With Sonny. Sonny. The only good part of that. that yeah, because that I point. did not like the new getup. No mohawk on Hawk. The, uh, one's wearing shorts. The other one's wearing uh, tie, uh, uh, long tights. 
the 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 shoulder pads look ghetto. Oh. Then the it next, just, I think the next, the next pay per view, I think they come out with the helmets, right? Yeah, well, they came out with the helmets at WrestleMania, oh, right? But then tonight, this night, they I, did, I don't think they, they, did, they did it at the, which the next probably one better without it. But yeah, I didn't, I didn't. It already, it, it already didn't work. Like no. that whole, like I said, the only thing that was good about LOT LOT a thousand was the way that sunny, sunny. Was. That exactly was when wearing those flames. But and and what's funny is Ross during this match called their finisher the devastation device. Yeah, so the doomsday device. Well, exactly. So I caught this that. A, one. I thought this was a bad match. I didn't think they had chemistry. No, like they these didn't. two teams didn't have chemistry. No, and not to mention we've said this that uh, this is like the decline of the Legion of Doom. Uh they're they're, all, they're missing a step, which they were they were they were missing mm -hmm. w uh, in this one. You know, Hawk hits a splash from the top rope on Road Dog. He went for the pin. Billy obviously hits Hawk, hits Hawk with the title. Here we go. And Road Dog went for the pin, but Hawk kicked out. Yeah. Uh, Road Dog then accidentally, I love it, then hits Billy with with the ti with the title. Um, now this this is where once again it's like, are we seriously doing this? Hawk German suplex Road Dog. Yep. Pins himself. His they shoulder was up. Went... His shoulder was up. His shoulder. They said it. I thought his Road shoulder Dogs was up. up. If you look at the other side, I don't know. I when they showed the thing. replay. His shoulder was was up, but well, then Hawk, both their Hawk, shoulders were. I thought his shoulder. Hawk, Hawk had it up a little bit. Right, that's what I'm trying to say. Either way, this is stupid. This is a stupid dust finish. Stupid, like it was, exactly. Like, like oh yeah, we think they're the champions, and I'm I'm like all right, Legion. They of played Doom. the music. They played the music and everything, and then oh no, no, the Outlaws are the tag team champions. Hawk pins himself. I'm like, you kidding me? You can't. It's just adding insult to injury. It's like let's just keep let's keep dumping on them. Exactly. This is just another chapter in what the outlaws have done to these guys. And another title match is not in their future. Matter of fact, the remaining pay per views, the few that they have, is feuds with DOA because then Paul Ellering gets involved in the oh, whole Lord. thing. Oh, Lord. Yeah, and Ellering starts uh, because once Chains leaves, it's just a Skull and Eight Ball. Ellering starts managing them, and then. The next paper, you got draws hanging around them, and then draws get kicks out. Oh, this is all. I did not like any of this. I, I really didn't. I thought to, this was the night they redeemed themselves and they win the tag team titles. Wrong. Nope. Exactly. Now moving on to the next thing. This is probably your favorite uh, part of the evening. Tennessee Lee introduces this Sawyer Brown, singing back up to Jeff Jarrett. He Ooh, broke 6,000 guitars. He never drew, never a, drew dime. a dime. And for those that don't know, Tennessee Lee is. And he was lip singing Parker. again, by the way. Yeah I, yeah, I forgot. I completely forgot about Colonel Rob Parker showing up here as Tennessee Lee. I completely it was a forgot about him. Yeah. Coffee. So I guess back he's back as like double J, I guess, because he, now he's a yes. singer again. Right. And he he's wearing the, the old attire. He's back. He he's up, got the hair poofed out again. He, he got rid of he got rid of the, the that Native American outfit that he had, the blue and the yeah. orange and white or whatever. And you know what? Guess what? Nobody cared. They still didn't care. They still didn't care. During this uh song, it was so silent. What happened? You could hear a rat piss on cotton. <laughs> That's how bad it was. But every Jeff like, Jarrett match and every event, we're gonna quote that. All right. For him, this, this, That's his quote. No, but it was it nobody was, cared. Nobody cared. Nobody cared. It's garbage. Why did we need a concert that night? This, what? you know how bad it was. It was so bad. The fans started chanting, "We want Flair." Yes. Think about they, they which I now I know we're in North Carolina, but that's not the point. The point is, you're they, you're at somebody else's. You're at another uh, organization's pay per view right. cheering for they one of the main at, events of the other so organization. They're like, they're like get. The, well, at the, I think at the time, uh. Flair was suspended or whatever was going on with him and Bischoff. Remember that? Yeah, he was doing that Bischoff. Him? Yeah, did. So I think he yeah. was suspended at the time. I remember hearing a rumor that I think that was all over his watching wanted to see his son wrestle. Yeah, it was a whole big mess. It was so. a whole thing, yeah. I, I heard a rumor that he was supposed to show up here just to be in the crowd, just to kind of piss Bischoff off, but it never happened for whatever reason. That would have been nice. Yeah, that would have been interesting. But um, they're chanting, we want Flair. Thank God. Thank God Blackman, Steve Blackman comes out. He yes. Did everybody a favor, and he beat the beat the hell out of um. Because Blackman's only loss to date is to Jarrett. Yeah. And um, Tennessee Lee hits hits Blackman with the guitar. The guitar, yeah. And then Jarrett puts the figure four leg lock on Blackman. So there goes that. And then to add insult to injury, the following month Jarrett's going to beat him again anyway. So. Oh, look. Well, I can't wait to review that. 
It's coming. Another Jeff Jarrett moment for you. Oh Lord Jesus! How many? He's and he's like on every damn pay per view going forward, right? To like ninety nine. Uh, till, till September ninety nine, I believe, in the Good Housekeepers match with China. Oh Jesus! Well, well, we're luckily we're, our in your house experience ends at St Valentine's Day Massacre. Yeah. So, and we've already covered SummerSlam ninety nine. So, I think you're 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 good for now, right. unless unless he was on the card, and I don't remember for Survivor Series ninety eight, but. We, we still got time to get to that. Yeah. Don't worry. We got plenty of Jarrett moments coming for you, bro. Especially when we get to them WCW moments. Oh, Lord Jesus. Oh, Lord Jesus. Imagine how you're going to be on that uh, slamboree where Arquette wins the title on Jarrett. How are you going to be on that? Oh, God. Yeah, exactly. Moving on to something that's more important and relevant in WWE. They did a video package like we needed a hype up on this next match of Undertaker and Kane for the first ever Infernal match, which to me was awesome. By the way, I liked it. I'm sorry. No, it was it was cool, but I it was dangerous, man. That looked really really dangerous. It that was. Match. I love how they uh, every time he did a big move, you just increase the gas a little bit and get yeah. those flames up. Flames What's to go higher. Tell me you weren't laughing at this point. Right before the match, Lawler pulls out the hot dog, the marshmallow. He goes, mm. "Come on, we're gonna have a barbecue." Jerry, Jerry was the <laughs> I'm like, "Oh my god, dude, are you serious?" Now, the match itself w- was great. You could tell, you know, these guys were completely soaked, you know, wet down enough. To, obviously, they had to. You know, you're right. This, this was a dangerous match. This could have could have gone the wrong had, um, way. Because he had set – he threw Undertaker in the casket and set him on fire, right, before this? At the Rumble, yeah. It was at the Rumble, okay. And then he choked, slammed him through his he parents' set... uh, uh, caskets. But the but the to set oh, yeah, him on fire that. was at the rumble. Oh god, I forgot. Oh my god, yeah. Don't slam him through the mama's, parents, through mama's and then the bones, the bones were there. Even he though it was, said, even though it was props, dude. Still, yeah. I remember he said. I remember Kane set like a, a cameraman on fire or something like that. Yeah, in the aisle. Yeah, yeah was later on with the lightning. A few years later, I think he set Jr. on fire, right? Or am yep. I? Or okay, that, that, did that did happen. Okay, all right. well, when same, Kane when Kane got unmasked. Yeah, because the whole the whole premise of this match was that he's saying Undertaker set him on set the house on fire and caused him to burn, so he wants Undertaker to feel the pain that he felt. Later on, we actually found out Undertaker did uh, set that house on fire and try to kill his brother. Yeah, yeah, but 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 uh, but at this point, at this point, storyline wise, Undertaker said he didn't do it. So. Yeah. Now, storyline wise, in my opinion, I think Kane should have been the one victor on this one because now you put the Undertaker two up on Kane, you're making him sort of look bad yeah, that he can dominate everybody else but i can't dominate i can't get over on the female that 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 to me i thank god it didn't happen because he was still a dominant force in the wwe yeah but i thought that could ruin him because with a second straight loss to the undertaker but yeah, yeah I, I, beat I, everybody else yeah i've said this before i kind of felt like there was nowhere for kane to go like after the undertaker i thought he was gonna be like a nails like you know, nails and, came into feud with Boston. At, 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 nothing... at least, at least they went to moved on to Austin. But it worked out there, and that, which was which was spectacular. So yeah, it was a great match. It wasn't it? Was this was enjoyable? Something different. Like I said, they fooled. Not that they fooled me, but if if the impression they were trying to give was that this was dangerous, I believed it was dangerous. Oh yes, I believed it too. And you know, to make matters worse, they they get out of the ring. Now Vader comes down. Well, Vader Vader's, hasn't gotten his ass whipped by Kane enough. Now he comes yeah, exactly. out. Exactly. Oh, he, got, he and he gets the wrench. You know, don't forget that. that he get, he got he the, yeah, he did get the wrench. He did get the wrench. Or was it the next one? Oh, he gets oh, the no, wrench. It was the next one. It was the next one. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, and, oh, he's beating down Kane. Over I love it. Here comes Taker flying over the... Flying over the, Vader. I love, I love how he misses Vader. He wasn't trying to hit Vader. But he missed Vader. And he hit Kane. And Vader still went down. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. And yeah. as they... Vader still sold it. Vader still sold it. And, and, you know, they're fighting, you know, Taker's, you know, chasing Paul Bearer all over the place. This gives Kane time off camera to put that fire resistant thing right, on his right. arm because the, the finish of the match, which was a little cheesy, in my opinion, a big boot on Kane. And you can see the thing on his arm and he puts his arm over there to make sure right. it gets set on fire. And he just he waves it off. He goes. So to me, that, that the, the, the finish was kind of cheesy with with the big boot. And, and but. I guess doing it that way was the safest way because, like you said, yeah. they, they proved to me that this could be dangerous. And thank God there were no accidents during this. Oh, one. yeah. Apparently, they had they had like firefighters and everybody on standby. They had like by the ring, they, they just kind of hid them. 
and they had people underneath the ring supposedly like ready Fire to come out. Just ready to go. Yeah, ready to go. So they did a great job protecting everybody, but giving giving the impression that this was very dangerous. If I was Kane, I wouldn't have done that. I would be like, ah, no, I'm not doing this arm on fire thing, even with that sleeve. But hey, credit to him, it worked out. The last one we saw was it was ten years ago. Actually, it's been ten years since we've seen yeah. an Inferno match, and that was Kane and Bray Wyatt. Yeah. So, so well, you, you can't have one anymore. Yeah. Doesn't make any sense. Uh, following this now, the, this crazy Inferno match, they showed what led up to the main event, which is Stone Cold Steve Austin defending the title against Dude Love for what could be the one and only pay per view title defense for Steve Austin. The Dude. what what he went through. With with Vince McMahon over the last month was just priceless. No, it was great with the uh, the whole him. I can beat you with my uh, one hand tied behind my back. The night the ratings changed, that's oh, what that did it. Oh, oh yeah, was yeah. The... It, was, it was Vince versus yeah. You're right, Vince versus Austin. Yeah. Yep, that broke the eighty four week yeah, streak. Yeah. <laughs> and then I don't know where where dude love comes into all of this. I mean, we we've seen Cactus Jack uh, in 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 nineteen ninety eight. Mankind. I would have, I would have expect, yeah, we're going to see mankind, especially a king of the ring. I just don't understand where the dude love persona comes out for the for the. Now I know they were former tag team champions as as him being uh, yeah. dude love, but it just it felt weird to me when this happened when I watched this for the first time live back then. I'm like, why can't we get uh, Cactus Jack or yeah? They would, I, they would, they were just trying to do something different. You know, it's funny. I um, because he turned on him, right? He came out during that match and he put he put the mandible claw on. Um, mm -hmm. That yeah, he turned heel. But I didn't understand. But I didn't understand why. Why did Austin try to save uh, Vince? It looked like he tried to save Vince. Remember, it looks like dude loves attacking Vince, and then Austin goes over there. I'm like, why don't you just leave him? Just walk out of the ring. Yeah, and then he turns it and and, and around on him. Man. But uh, you know it's funny. I watched this uh, with a friend of mine recently, and uh, he hadn't he wasn't really watching uh, WWF at this at this time, right? He started watching I think like ninety nine two thousand somewhere around there. So he sees Dude Love come out, and he's like, "Oh, that's uh, that's that's Mick Foley, right?" I'm like, "No, Dude Love." And he's like, "Wait, no, that that's the guy from New York, right? That he's he's mankind." And I'm like, "No, nah, it's Dude Love." And he's like, well, "Well, what do you mean?" I'm like, "He's like, I don't know." What he, I, I said, "That's Dude Love, though." And I try to explain to him the whole four faces of full. He didn't get it. I said, "You you had to be there. You had to be there to, to understand what was going." On. So, but I don't get it, isn't he? But he was mankind at the same time as Dude Love, and and I was again like, yeah, Cactus Jack. He's a like, Cactus Jack. I'm like, all right, never mind. The, the only man to go through the rumble with three <laughs> percent. Oh, that was awesome. That was, was awesome. great. That was awesome. Yeah. Would have been great if he if he actually went through a fourth time. It's just Mick Foley. Mick Foley, yeah. But uh, I mean, th this was awesome. Uh, Mick Foley with his. Uh, Cactus Jack, dude, love mankind is just awesome, especially in 1998. How how he's constantly trying to kiss Vince's ass uh, at this point, and then of course, obviously, he's going to try to do this around Survivor Series. Um, but the, the this whole thing that led up to this night w was just great, and th they did, these two guys did not disappoint. Um, they uh, they fought all the way to the bandstand uh, area where where they had the concert earlier in the evening. Austin Austin beat the hell out of him, and I yes, was happy he did. because I was like I had enough of him. I had enough of mankind like messing messing with the Undertaker. Now he's messing with Austin as dude love. Now uh, what's what's funny is during the match, Vince and the two Stooges uh, come to ringside. Vince is sitting ringside for this, staring at Mark Eaton. And the first thing that pops up in my mind watching this live was, oh man, if Brett could see this now, we're gonna about to have another one of these. And I, and I, and I'm and I'm young, you know, and you're a wrestling fan back then, you, you don't you know, realize obviously Vince is not going to fire his hottest wrestler. Like this is, you know, remember this is a storyline type of thing. And uh, I'm just I'm yelling at the thing I'm like you son of a bitch why are you doing this he just got the title and then you know Austin you know chasing uh, Vince down the aisle dude love clotheslines him from behind um it, it all, when Austin suplex dude love on the stairs though that's when I was like oh hell he killed him yeah because he hit hard yeah he was beating man I was happy to see it though I was happy <laughs> oh I can't wait till you get to King of the Ring ninety eight yeah. I, I can't wait. No, I actually felt bad. There, there, I actually felt bad. Which time? The time he fell off or the time he fell through? Both. 
Well, I love I love Ross. Oh my God, he, they killed him. Stop yeah. it already. And and Taker's like, oh, I I, I fractured my foot. Been doing and Foley's like, hold my beer. I got a tooth, two couple concussions. What you got? A foot. Um, towards the end of the match, dude, love close lines the referee. Now we ain't got no referee for this one. Naturally, uh, he has the mandible claw on Austin, but because of what he did. Uh, no referee to count uh, Austin out. Um, he went for it again, but was unsuccessful. Austin uh, went for a chair on this one, and of course, Vince is now stopping him from using it. Mm-hmm. Um, what's funny is then Austin finally does get the chair. It looks like he's aiming for dude love, but it just goes a little higher, and he knocks Vince out yep. cold, which I loved. Um he un- Austin then stunned uh, Dude Love. He had no referee, so Austin's like, the hell with it. Counts the three himself and declares himself the victor, and, and the, the music hits. Now, when they're doing this whole drama soap opera thing with Vince having to be on, put on a stretcher, um, they Briscoe told Finkel the result of the match, which was that Austin was disqualified. Right. And that Dude Love was the victor in this one. So... Austin's first title defense, he, he gets disqualified, but keeps the title. He keeps the title, yeah. So. But all in all, I mean, it wasn't bad. It was more interesting, the Austin McMahon uh, storyline going into mm-hmm. this match. But what's going to make it even better is the following month, their storyline just intensifies even more. Right, yeah. So uh, Because Dude Love will get another shot at this since he uh, was the victor here, but didn't right. get the title. Yeah. So overall, I mean, this is a good pay-per-view. It's enjoyable. It was. Nice moments, especially the main event. Austin didn't get screwed, so that's the good yeah, thing. But I love yeah. how he counted his own three. Yeah, that was cool. And, that was just, and, and they, they put the music on, like, oh, yeah, we'll start. Right, right, you won, yeah. Anyway, yeah. So. So. All right, well, you guys, let us know what you think. Please like, comment, share, subscribe. We'll see you guys soon. Take care.